Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and it's quite a momentous video today because it's the first time we've ever featured a diesel well apart from my own A2 TDI but that doesn't really count but don't switch off just yet because it's quite a good diesel it's a Golf GTD now we've had GTD versions of the Golf ever since the Mark 1 they haven't always come to the UK though but it really got popular here with the Mark 6 so when the Mark 7 Golf came out in 2013 we had a GTD model pretty much straight away and it proved so popular it outsold the petrol GTI 3 to 1 and to make it even more popular in 2015 they brought out an estate version which is what we've got here we've actually got a Mark 7.5 GTD estate to look at today now this could be the perfect car for a lot of people it gives you the sportiness the practicality the good looks and it gives you great MPG and low CO2 so it's really good on benefiting kind for company car tax in theory it's a the perfect car for me and I don't own one for various reasons but maybe I ought to anyway without any further ado let me give you a good tour of this Mark 7.5 Golf GTD Estate, after which we'll go for a drive. OK, guys, let's start off with a little bit of trivia, and that is that the Mark 7 Golf was co-designed by a chap called Mark Lichter. Now, that name might be familiar to you because he went on to be design chief at Audi. So clearly having this car in his portfolio did his career no harm. And you can see why. It's a great piece of design for what is a humble hatchback or a state car. And I think when Mark 7.5 came out in 2017, it looked even better, particularly in these higher powered variants. As with any facelift, most changes were concentrated on lights and bumpers, but they collectively make quite a big difference. So primarily, the big difference on this car is that we've got LED headlights. The daytime running lights have always been LED, but on Mark 7, we had by xenon dipped and main beam. On this car, it's all LED. The grille down here has been reprofiled, so you can probably see it goes in and out, and that's the same at the top here. And this bumper here now used to be just a flat sort of 45 degree. Now it's got kicks out at the bottom, a bit like a ski jump. So yeah, pretty nice, especially in this Indian grey. This was a new colour for Mark 7.5. Before that it was carbon steel grey. I haven't compared them side by side, but I think they're pretty similar. We've got the standard 18-inch wheels on this car with Bridgestone S001 tyres, very common size of 2254018. Once upon a time, that was the top dog tyre on the Audi TT. The sides of the car are pretty similar, whether it's Mark 7 or 7.5. So I just missed these GTI daggers, but here they're GTD with a silver background instead of red. We've got these sill extensions that are just unpainted plastic, but they they look good and they protect the sills from damage from stones and stuff. The back end, well, we don't have a GTI state to compare it with, but you can imagine if it was a GTI, it would have the two wheelbarrow exhaust. Well, here we've got the standard tips there. The weird thing about the estate versions, whether it's a GTD or an R, is that they've just got the standard rear lights, while the GTI, GTD and R hatchbacks have got sort of special LED rear lights. So it's a shame they couldn't carry that over. But these are still pretty nice looking because they are LED anyway. It's really weird how far back the diffuser is, but I'm sure there's a big gap there as well, which might be to allow for a tow bar to be installed. Because I can put my hand in there, so that must be for that. So I guess that's why that's set back, because people do like to tow. After all, it is a diesel estate car. Got some nice uh, brushed or matte aluminium roof rails. OK, let's have a look inside. So I think we'd better talk about tartan because, believe it or not, it's not to everybody's tastes. If you're not a GTI buff like me or probably you, you're not really that going to be that bothered that this was the trim used in the Mark 1 Golf GTI of 1976. You'll look at it and you'll think it looks like something the Bay City Rollers would have used as trousers or a waistcoat or underpants. You know, and you think, well, why have you got a modern digital dashboard car with seat fabric from the 1970s, which let's face it, wasn't the height of fashion, you know. I don't think flares are gonna make a comeback anytime soon. But there we go, it does liven up the cabin, it does more so in the GTI where this is all red and the stitching's all red and even on the steering wheel the stitching is red. In fact, so intent on getting rid of red in this car were they, I'm amazed they even left the red warning for the door being left open. Anyway, down here we have got stainless steel pedals, we've got standard floor mats, which are just plain black. Couldn't be bothered to put a contrasting stitch in there, I guess. We do get ambient lighting in the door, 
and the sills. This car's got the protection pack, which means it's got these hastily applied foils to stop scuffs on the sills, which are quite a nice touch. And we've got electric folding mirrors, which can be linked to when you turn the car on and off, or you can just do them manually. If that horrible whining noise annoys the hell out of you. Okay, so this is a 7.5 car. The basic architecture is the same. The dash is identical, but we have a gesture controlled infotainment screen, which is slightly bigger. I think it's roughly the same size as a Discover Pro in the Mark 7s. And we've got this digital dash, which means you can have navigation there, but you can't have it here as well. So if you want your passenger to do the navigation while you see it as well, where well, you can't have that. You can have the navigation instructions inside the gauges though, so I guess it can work, but it just seems a bit stingy that they've made that an extra cost option. So press map, and there you go. Which is all well and good, but I think as these cars come with, comes with Apple CarPlay as standard now, you, uh, you're better off just using that. Because Waze is a free app and it's brilliant. The owner of this car actually showed me how to get it on here because I didn't realise there were two screens for this. So if you just slide across, there's Waze. Although actually when I first tried it, I had to update the app to get it to show on here. So yeah, it's really good at Waze's. And because it's connected to other users, so you get more information, you can be told about potholes or stationary vehicles. It's much more informative than the standard nav. So ironically, I like the 7.5 because you get nav as standard and you get heated seats, but the fact you get CarPlay now as well means that the nav, for me anyway, is pretty much redundant. We get a golf ball gear knob, which is a nice touch. Not even some GTIs have got that, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, cool. Electric parking brake, we've got traction control off, we've got start stop off, we've got driver modes, so you can have these different driving modes, eco, if you're running out of fuel, normal, which is the best balance, sport, which makes it a bit probably noisier and a bit less nice to drive usually, and individual where you can mix and match. Now, unfortunately, this car does not have DCC, dynamic chassis control, so there's no suspension option in here. So really the modes, that, in my eyes, are, are pretty useless without that because what DCC does when you change it makes such a big difference it makes everything else pale into insignificance but on 18s to be fair it rides pretty well so if you just have a standard car the spec of it is good enough for most people nowadays got a pretty decent glove box which however is mostly taken up with the book pack some sd card slots in there center armrest with nothing funny going on in there yeah down here's a usb and an aux in and you've got reasonably good adjustment of the steering wheel in all directions. Up GTI owners, look away now. Okay, seeing as this is primarily a practical car, let's go and have a look at rear accommodation. Okay, first thing you notice is that the door doesn't open all the way around. So you'd really like it to be 90 degrees to the body. Well, it's about sort of 50 to 60 degrees, which means that it doesn't look particularly easy to get into. You've just got this narrow gap between the seat cushion and the speaker there. You can also, you can, I guess on this estate car, you can hold on to the roof rail if you want to. Makes it a bit easier. But I think also you end up putting your foot here as well, which is probably where the fuel tank is under the back seat. So maybe going in backwards is probably the more graceful way of doing it and then just pivoting around. So yeah, I think that's a bit better. Okay, well, there's plenty of leg room. Uh, the seat's in my driving position, I'm six foot tall, so I've got space there and I'm pretty comfortable. Seats feel nice. Headrest goes up to the right point there. That's actually perfect. What you do notice though, is that it's very, dark in here because we've got this black headliner on this bright warm day it does feel a bit oppressive a bit like being in a coal bunker so i know yeah bay headliners aren't cool but they are there for a reason that's to make the interior a bit more airy a bit like if you painted your lounge black it would feel quite small and pokey if you did it in a nice off-white color which is why that's most popular when people are doing their houses up to sell it makes the place feel bigger and more airy and i think if you're in a car for quite a long period, it can make a difference to how you feel. Right then, 
let's go and have a look at the boots because I looked, I did a review of a Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate last September and I didn't talk about the boot, which was a bit of a mistake. People did comments about that. So let's not do that again. Right, before we go in the boot though, you can fold the seats down here. They're really heavily sprung though, so I'm pushing hard back now to get it to go back into place. So you have to be really careful if you're not particularly strong or you've got particularly valuable fingernails because you could easily break them off. So there we go. Good news is that even with the headrest up, it does not hit the back of that seat. Open the boot with the VW badge. I still sometimes go down here because I think on some of the, was it Mark 6 or 5, you still open the boot with a, a button there. But no, that's a really nice bit of design. Okay, so it's a big boot, 225 litres more than the hatchback. You can get this load cover out pretty easy with one hand even if you're holding a camera so that's good you can fold that seat down well both seats down if you want to with this lever here which is quite a nice touch i don't know why i really quite like that we've got more storage under here including a space saver spare wheel but that's a really useful space as well and there's also a weird little compartment under here which you have to undo those things on and pull the carpet forward to get to oh, go on then it'll probably prove popular with people who do a bit of import export Let's see if I can get that back yeah the weird thing is you can't undo those clips and then pivot it forward because the carpet actually wedges under that rear bit of carpet like that so that's in yeah strange I'm sure there's a reason for it it's probably where the Germans keep their sausages maybe well whenever I see a big flat boot floor on an estate car I can't resist going and lying on it. Don't know why, but let's do that. I could quite easily sleep in this car, I reckon. So I'm six foot and my feet are inside the load lip. Oh, just a bit of a cushion on the duvet. Sorted. Mm -mm. Oh, you want me to go and drive it? Okay, let's go and drive this Golf GTD Estate. Okay guys, here we are behind the wheel of the Mark 7.5 Golf GTD Estate. Now, as I said in the intro, it's quite a rare thing for us, us to have a diesel on this channel, but I still think they serve a purpose. They've been unfairly demonised, so really I should have been promoting them a lot sooner because I drive a lot of miles and I really can't find anything to compare. I've done the stats and you get a lot more miles out of your diesel and you produce less CO2, which is great for global warming, which is a big issue. The beauty of the GTD is that it gives you all that. It gives you the economy, it gives you the clear conscience when it comes to the environment, but it also is quite exciting to drive. It also lets you drive into the clean air zones without paying a fee because this car's at Euro 6 compliant. So it is a win-win-win thing. The only thing you have to wonder is whether people will still be buying them in the numbers they are now, because this has been a very popular car. Will demand drop off? Well, I don't think it should do, to be honest, because it is such a great package. Okay, it's not as fast or as engaging to drive as a Golf GTI, we'll find out in a bit. The 0 to 60 times a good, like, second slower for the hatch, and we gain another 0.4 seconds with this estate car, so it's 7.9 seconds. It doesn't really do it justice because it's got the torque of a Mark 7 Golf R, 280 pounds foot, which is actually more than that of a Golf GTI, which is 258 pound foot. So it does have a lot of real world performance, even though the 0 to 60 time isn't particularly brilliant. That's fourth gear pickup is great and can you tell it's a diesel but the only the only rattle is coming from my tray plates on the dashboard it's a very very refined car the only thing to tell you it's a diesel is the the rev counter which kind of runs out a puff at about 5000 rpm there's nothing to be gained going beyond about four and a bit so we're in fourth now Yeah, it's got a very deceptive turn of speed. It's not as crazily fast as the Golf R DSG, which kind of picks up big numbers without even trying. But you still have to keep an eye on that speedo. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, this is a diesel car. And all I can hear is a bit of wind noise and a bit of tyre noise. But it is a very, very refined car, generally, actually. For an estate car with no sort of proper ceiling that we even got a seat down <laughs> i don't know why that's down and the car still sounds very very quiet so you could drive this all day long likewise the ride 
he's very comfortable. They did a great job with Mark 7, 7.5 and making the standard wheels ride really well in the UK. If you put 19s on this without fitting dynamic chassis control, it will feel a bit harsh. I'll just turn it around. But yeah, whilst it's not as sharp as a GTI, I do actually feel like driving that road again now and a little bit more spiritedly. So we can pop it into race mode, but there's not an awful lot to be gained. It makes the steering a little bit heavier. It doesn't do anything to the ride because we haven't got DCC. Uh, and just give you that sort of fake impreza type noise, which, well, I guess it gives it a bit of character because it is so quiet. Gear shift, well, obviously, DSG is a very popular choice of this kind of car if you're going to get stuck in traffic. It's, it makes a lot of sense. It also makes it 0.1 of a second faster, so 7.8 is hardly really worth it. But this gives you a degree of engagement that I think is pretty crucial because in a lot of ways this car lacks the engagement of a GTI. It's, you know, it's, without this, you may find that this car is a little bit too detached, a little bit too remote to be that enjoyable. So, and the gear shift's nice. It's just like, actually, it feels like the one I had in my Golf R. Let's just hope the clutch is a little bit stronger being a diesel. So yeah, it's not bad, not bad, not bad at all. But you don't need to change much anyway, because it's so torquey. I mean, this is fourth. I bet we can do fourth from crawling, really. So let's, let's, let's get it's about a thousand RPM, so 20 miles an hour, foot to the floor. <laughs> Maybe that was a bit ambitious. Let's go now. 2,000 revs, but 1,800 it starts to pick up its skirts, unfortunately in time for a corner. Yeah, okay, well we'll probably see, I estimate, around 90 miles an hour in fourth quite easily. Okay, but corners are where it matters, and blimey. It's got that playful rear end you kind of get used to with MQBs. Golfs didn't used to do that, but when you load it up on a corner like that, you feel the stance going very neutral because the back of the car feels like it's doing some of the work, which is quite addictive really and I'm so glad that this estate car with a diesel engine still can can do that. And the brakes are oh, lovely again it's a modern car don't know how long they'll last on track but they feel really nice now. Okay it hasn't got the na neck snapping acceleration of an R or even a, a GTI performance but Bear in mind, this car does 60.1 to the gallon, apparently. So, yeah, you just have to work out what you want. But with this, it will be the perfect combination for so many people because it's got pretty much as much performance as you can need for these crappy, congested UK roads. It's a practical car. It's well-made. It's nice to look at. It's very comfortable. It's very refined. Yeah, I like it. Maybe I should buy one. Maybe I will one day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, please share, please subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one really soon.